Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan, and it is Tuesday, August 4th at 9-11 a.m. And I wanted to make, um, I guess, a somewhat serious video. It is. I'm talking about self-harm. That's something that's fucking serious. So, basically, I just kind of want to essentially write a letter uh, to those of us that struggle with self-harm and self-harm comes in a lot of ways a lot of people just think of someone um, cutting themselves but there's many other ways there is burning oneself there's um, uh, banging your head maybe or there's something called breaking where perhaps you are injuring yourself so bad that you break a bone um, and there's also something called trickle tillamania um, which means um, that someone is pulling their hair so there's a lot of different ways that someone can self-harm um, and it doesn't have to do with substance abuse or drug use this is physically causing it's also called self-injury. It's physically causing your body um, physical harm uh, intentionally. So um, I've talked about my struggles with self-harm years ago because I haven't talked about it on my channel forever because I'm in recovery. Um, but I just, I just want, I want to talk to y'all that happen to struggle with this. So first, I want to say that you're not alone. And I want to let you know that this is a lot more common than you think it is. I know people that self-harm anywhere from age that started at age eight to people in their 60s. So this is not uncommon. It's just people don't want to speak up about it because there's so much stigma. Um very much like any mental illness, but especially self-harm. Uh, um, people usually equate it to um, attention-seeking behavior, and it's not. Like, the bottom line is, if you are in a spot mentally um, and like spiritually in your life that you are causing, that you're self-inflicting pain on yourself, I don't view that as attention-seeking. I see that as someone that needs help, someone that needs to be heard, and someone that is hurting. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, it's how you're coping. Some people drink alcohol, some people do drugs, some people have sex. There are many ways that people learn to cope with whatever it is that is ailing them in life, whether it be work, school, family, self, body image, whatever. We all struggle with things. However, if it's coming out in the form of self-harm, it's usually sometimes people do it to punish themselves. Some people do it because they they need to feel pain. Um, I hear a lot that some people do it because they need to remind themselves that they're alive. And I understand that someone that doesn't self-harm or never has that that might sound really confusing and be like, well, why the fuck would you do that to yourself? Well, as I was saying, we all have different ways of coping with things. And while this is a maladaptive way of dealing with feelings and emotions, it serves a purpose in someone's life. Doing that behavior is keeping them alive. It's what's keeping them on this earth. And what I mean by that is they're in so much pain that the only way to release that happens to be and hurting themselves instead of killing themselves they hurt themselves and I want to make it very clear that there is a difference between self-harm especially when it comes to cutting and a suicide attempt or wanting to die not the same thing not even close in the same category but for some reason society likes to lump the two together that's not the case for most people uh, that self-harm it's just that action 
Now maybe it'll escalate to the point that someone might become suicidal, but usually the reason for us hurting ourselves, it's not because we wanna die. It's because we're feeling so much and we don't know how else to deal with things. And yeah, I just, I didn't realize, I personally did not realize the age span of people that self-harm. I you know, to my own ignorance really thought that, not that it was like a younger person thing that it was only to teenagers, but I never considered that like 60 year olds would struggle with this. And it's like, that's pretty ignorant of me to think because 60 year olds are human beings. 60 year olds struggle with life just as much as anybody else. So, you know what I mean? But yeah, I just really want to hammer that you're not alone. Please don't be ashamed of the way that you have learned to cope with your feelings. It's it's nothing to be ashamed of, even though society and your family members and friends and the world will try and tell you otherwise, but I'm here to tell you that it's okay. It's okay if this is the only way you know. But what I also will say is that there are better ways to cope with what's going on. There is therapy if you're in a financial situation or you have insurance to get help. There are many community centers that might offer free therapy. But besides therapy, there are other alternatives to hurting yourself. So um, I always like to give people the example of It, it, if someone is gonna hurt themselves, I, I feel like honestly those are the kindest people on earth because they would rather take out pain on themselves than hurt someone else. They would rather inflict pain on their body than yeah, yeah, just I don't know, I just think there's something really powerful about that. And another thing that I like to reference is imagining um, if you're someone who self-harms, if your loved one was standing in front of you, maybe it's your best friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, whomever, and they had a knife and they decided to cut themselves. I think that would be a really powerful moment and I actually know people, like personally, that this has happened to that they said, if you're gonna continue to hurt yourself, then so am I. And so it's like, we would never do that to our best friends or our parents, we, we would never do that. So we have to ask ourselves, well, why would we do that to ourselves? It's not fair. That's the bottom line of that conversation. So that's just kind of some food for thought and, um, yeah just know that everything is going to be okay someday and to not give up hope and that there is a lot of help out there there are crisis lines there are reddit groups um i'll actually plug this reddit group that i go to called reddit slash stop self-harm that's been extremely helpful for me and it's anonymous so you don't have to tell anything that you don't want to. You don't have to reveal any information or your, or your name. Um, but you can get help from other people with shared experiences. And yeah, just know that events that have happened to you, people that have hurt you in the past, that doesn't mean that you need to take it out on yourself. You deserve better. So I don't know, let's all get better together. <laughs>